And we are not done with Pakistan. This afternoon, something unusual happened there. The country's prime minister was summoned by the Supreme Court over a case that dates back seven years. Look at these images. They're from Islamabad. This was Imran Khan's convoy as he arrived at the top court's premises accompanied by an array of ministers. It was a rare sight indeed. It's not every day that you see a sitting prime minister attend a court hearing. Perhaps Imran Khan viewed this as yet another opportunity for a photo op. He was all smiles as he entered the court, although he did not really have a reason to be smiling. The last time Pakistan's apex court summoned a prime minister, he ended up getting dismissed. We're talking about Nawaz Sharif. He was dismissed by Pakistan's Supreme Court over the Panama leak scandal in 2018. What about Imran Khan? In his case too, a dismissal cannot be ruled out. There are several reasons. But the biggest one is the fact that this case involves a terrorist outfit. A terrorist outfit that Imran Khan has recently struck a peace deal with. The tehreek e taliban Pakistan, the TTP, an outfit that wants to rule Pakistan under the Sharia law that made the government surrender. In 2014, this very same group killed 132 school children at the army public school in Peshawar. The province where this attack took place was ruled by Imran Khan's party at that time, in 2014. So the court in Pakistan wanted to know what action Imran Khan had taken against the culprits. What steps had he taken to redress the grievances of the parents? Imran Khan was asked to clarify. The Prime Minister's response was a bit baffling. He is said to have told the court, and I'm quoting from what he said, uh, there are no holy cows in Pakistan. I believe in the rule of law. Allah will give patience to the parents of the school children. What more could the government have done apart from giving compensation? What more could the government have done? For starters, it could have avoided a peace deal with the killers of those innocent children. Imran Khan's party has chosen to legitimize the group that killed 132 children. It has signed a ceasefire agreement with them. And as if to rub salt on the wounds of the parents, Imran Khan's ministers are now trying to humanize the very same terrorist group. Ministers like Chaudhry Fawad Hussain are drawing bizarre distinctions. He's talking about the good and the bad TTP. He says there are various groups within the Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan. Some are ideologues, some joined under compulsions. And Pakistan wants to give them a chance. You have to listen to what he said. We believe that there are certain groups. Obviously, TTP is not one group. They are they are, they comprise on several groups. So, there are ideologues. There are people who have legitimate grievances against uh, probably us. There are people who uh, who have joined uh, this uh, who, who who took took this course under compulsions. But all of them are Pakistanis. So, the state of Pakistan wants to give its citizen a chance. If, if, if all of them or some of them or part of them wants to come back and, you know, they uh, show their, they express their allegiance to the constitution of Pakistan, they, they, they uh, undertake uh, to respect the law of Pakistan, obviously we will give them a chance. We'll give them a chance, he says. For the record, there are at least 81 proscribed terrorist outfits in the country, in Pakistan, 81. Together, they have around 30 to 40,000 terrorists. How many of them will Islamabad give a chance to? As it is the peace deals with the TLP, the tehreek e labek Pakistan and the tehreek e taliban Pakistan, TTP, have prompted other radical outfits to demand the same kind of relief from the government. What does this tell you? that the government under Imran Khan has set a dangerous precedent by making peace deals with radicals and terrorists. It has opened a Pandora's box. It has allowed proscribed organizations to pressurize the government to accept their demands. It has allowed them to make threats of paralyzing the country if those demands are not met. Imran Khan is a man in trouble. Every institution in Pakistan is upset with him. This includes the clergy that is letting loose religious extremists on the government. It includes the judiciary that is cornering the government for surrendering to terrorists, to extremists. 
It also includes the army that has decided to let the government stew in its own juices. The writing is on the wall for Imran Khan. This is how the end of a prime minister begins in Pakistan. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.